how much air will these various fans actually move? So I'm going to measure how much air actually goes through them. So I got a cardboard box to blow air out of so I can measure how much air is going into it. So I'm blowing air out of the box instead of into it because the airflow coming out is really uneven whereas the still air going in will be evenly distributed. My anemometer shows fairly consistent numbers as I move around the area here but I don't like how coarse the increments are on the display plus it turns out it's not even that accurate so I'm using a computer to read the sensor directly and I've got that calibrated. So my wind speed readings didn't really vary all that much as I moved it around the box, so I think I can trust that. So for this Drio air circulator, I'm averaging about 1.7475. Now with the Vornado in there and the anemometer in exactly the same location, I'm averaging about uh, 1.73. And those readings are all in meters per second. Now the Drio pedestal fan is a bit more tricky to get in here. Lucky for me this fan is an app because the controls are kind of inaccessible right now. Now ideally I get myself out of here because every time I move around here that changes things so I should be at a distance from it. So steady state for that one is about 1.37. Now this box fan is loud and not an optimal fit but by sheer volume of air moved it wins. So if I turn it down to level 2, it's more reasonable. And at level 2, it still has 83% of the airflow that it has at level 3. Now this window fan is nice and quiet, but in terms of airspeed reading, it's the lowest. And with that fan on the bottom, I thought maybe there'd be more flow on the bottom, but raising the anemometer doesn't change things much. I took my cheap pedestal fan off of its base and kind of stuffed it in the box and it moves a surprisingly large amount of air. So now taking into account the area of this box minus the obstruction here, I get uh, 0.193 square meters. The box fan pulled in air the fastest at 2.57 meters per second, or about half a cubic meter per second, or about 30 cubic meters per minute, or 1051 CFM. Then the Drio, the Vornado, and the cheap pedestal fans were all actually fairly close, then followed by the Drio pedestal fan, and the window fan was the slowest. But the window fan and the box fan are actually the only ones that can pull air in through a window, and considering this is half the size of the box fan and very quiet, it's actually not too bad. Now let's see how well I can move air around the house. So I'm blowing out this door, and the only place the air can go is actually down this hallway through this spare kitchen here and then through an opening here that's 1.08 square meters and the anemometer is barely turning sometimes and then the air has to go back and I've got my anemometer reading on the computer here let's turn that to max and put it in the middle and we're still not spinning that anemometer let's back that fan up by one meter and now we have enough wind speed for an anemometer to turn and saying it's about half a meter per second. Let's try two meters. And the wind speed's gone up. Now three meters. And I also tested it at four meters from the door. Best was about three or four meters, that's uh, 10 feet or 13 feet. And I got effectively 1872 CFM through that opening in the other door. And that is considerably more air than I've got going through that box fan itself. And that's because as that stream of air comes off the box fan and heads for the door, it mixes with a lot of air in here and by the time it gets to the door there's actually a lot more air moving than just went through the box fan and that's why we have more air going through the door than went through the fan. Now most of the time you want to move air you'd want to move it through a window and the window would have bug screen on it so I've got uh, some bug screens here to test this and typically if you move air through one window you also want it to move through another which would also have bug screen on it so I've got bug screen on this opening too and I made that a bit smaller because of the size of my bug screens. So let's try that again with various distances. Now with a smaller opening, the best distance was a meter and a half or five feet. So even though I had to blow through two bug screens, I still got 1336 CFM and that's 27% more than goes through the fan directly. 
With the Dremo air circulator, the sweet spot ended up being much further away, so I had to actually be quite careful making sure it was aimed correctly at my test window. And at 3 meters away, I got 0.82 meters per second out of my other window, making for a 1442 CFM, which is more than the box fan had, even though the box fan's flow rate through the fan itself was about one and a half times more than the Drio. And that's because this thing actually produces more thrust, and so with more distance for air to mix, it actually ends up moving more air than the box fan can move. So then I was curious about using this noisy little blower, which produces a very fast jet, but uh, not so much air. And at 3 meters away, I got up to 0.79 meters per second, which is to say about 1200 CFM moved through the hallway. Pretty impressive for such a small blower. And that was actually pushing more air than my box fan. And now with the Vornado, which does its best at 3 meters or 10 feet away. And it managed to put 13 and 1 CFM through that window, which is 10% less than the Drio did and almost as much as the box fan. And even with this window fan that's meant to go straight up against the window, if I move it a meter and a half away from the window and blow at it, I move about one and a half times as much air through that window as I was moving with my cardboard box with no screens. I tabulated my data and then worked out the CFM for each of these fans and what distance that was. And interestingly enough, the ones that peaked at uh, three meters are actually the three black fans, which are kind of air mover fans that have a more concentrated flow. Whereas the three white fans, these all peaked out at about a meter and a half from the window. I also worked out what the multiplication factor was for air moved through the fan versus air moved down the hallway. And the three black ones had the higher multiplication factors because they also have the larger distance and the more concentrated flow. Whereas the other ones had less of a multiplier and the box fan the least because it has the most broad sort of flow. Now ultimately how much air each fan moved should be a function of the total push that each fan gave to the air. So I measured the thrust of each of my fans on my thrust measuring platform, which is basically just a contraption that takes the pushback from each fan and translates that into weight on the scale. I took the thrust of each fan plus the maximum CFM I was able to produce down the hallway and plotted those against each other and sure enough the greater the thrust the more air it was able to move but it didn't seem to be a linear relationship and then I realized oh yeah this is turbulent airflow the amount of pressure that's needed is a function of velocity squared and so plotting a parabola against this all my data points line up quite nicely. So if placed at a distance from my test window all these fans end up moving more air through the window than went through the fan itself. This is even true for this window fan that's meant to be placed in the window itself. So there's always some sort of air multiplier effect that happens. In fluid dynamics, it's called entrainment. Now, Dyson is very proud of using air multiplier technology, as they call it. But ironically, from previous tests, the Dyson is the weakest of all the fans I have. Now, how much air a fan can move is just a matter of how much of a shove the fan gave to the air in the first place. And this is where this Drio fan wins, because it's got the highest thrust of all my fans. And I think all fans should come with a thrust rating right on the box. And Vornado is very proud of their vortex action for their air circulator fans, and it works pretty good, because this fan moves almost as much air as my bigger, noisier box fan. But uh, whatever this vortex action is, basically the Drio beats it at its own game, because this one moves more air than this one without all the marketing mumbo jumbo. And it has the most thrust of all the fans I tested and it'll actually move more air than my big noisy box fan though I had to place it three meters away from my window. That said, uh, this pedestal Drio poly fan doesn't have as much thrust. This one actually has about 12% less thrust than the Vornado. Sorry Drio. But it is a pretty cool looking fan. Uh, cooler than the Dyson? I don't know. But you'd need four Dyson fans to do the work of this one Drio poly fan because the poly fan has got four times the thrust. And I got these two Drio fans from doing a sponsor video with them, but I wasn't going to make this video a sponsor video. It's just so much easier to film that way. But with how the numbers came out, I ended up reaching out to Drio after all the filming to see if they're interested in sponsoring it after all. And so now this video is sponsored by Drio. And right now there's a very nice promotion on for both of these fans until July 12th. That's tomorrow. 
After that, uh, check the video description because I can update promotions on that, but I can't change the video after the fact. And both of these use a very quiet, very efficient 24-volt uh, brushless DC motor, runs off of a wall adapter, although I've managed to run both of these off of uh, 12 volts, although not at full power, so that could be useful to some of you off-grid or RV type people. So go check out those fans, uh, they blow hard, but they've got 10 levels, so you can also use them to blow gently. Because more thrust is better.